they were using general anesthesia. When we started this, we did all of our kids are under local. Now we had cardiac kids. Here, right? So there you are, we're doing under local and you know, don't you know just you know so you know we were very careful. Um, but you learned that you could do this in your local. So when the but C B kids come along to put but see cardiac kids are used to procedures. They know how to hold still. And they, they actually ask for local. Um, the CP kids, they don't want to know from nothing, you know, knock me up. So what we do is just give them a little bit of something, and once, there's, and once they get a little something, then we put the local in, and then the anesthesiologist bring, brings them almost to the point where they're climbing away. That's when I do my thing. Okay. So they're, they're, they're as close to awake as you can get. Right. And on the few cases where I think I've, I've undershot, I may have not waited long enough for them to be, to be light enough. Yeah. So that's the other thing. When they're working with these kids under general anesthesia, um, yeah. they're, they're not only under general anesthesia, they're intubated, and to intubate, when they do intubation, they automatically put them under muscle paralyzed agents. Right. They're paralyzed. I'm saying, how can you do anything functional with, with uh, right. sectional choline or curare on board? Well, I mean, that, that turns a human being into, in, into a, uh, just a little dish, dish ring. Right? Just limp there. Even if you're, it's, it's, it shuts off. Well, you're shutting off all traces of, of muscular activity. Right down to zero when you do that. You have to be you have to be breathed by the anesthesiologist. You don't even breathe on your own at that point. You see, so they're under they're under uh, general anesthesia and muscle paralysis. And yeah. Yeah. Everybody looks pretty good though under general anesthesia. Under general anesthesia. <laughs> and then they do a VRO that way, and it's in. But they got to put them in a spike of cats because. They know that if they don't, the, the hip will be out before they even hit the recovery room. Mm -hmm. Then they send them over to the CT and do a CT after the wait to see if the hip has stayed in on the trip. A lot of these people are brought back to the OR to be re, re, to re, reposition the spica cast because the VROs are horribly unstable, and a lot of them are dislocated before they even even wake up. So they have to actually re-anesthetize them to reposition with the cast. To, tr to find a position to keep it in, hopefully if it, long it will adapt and then the, 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 the big no, no. bird from the sky comes down and makes it better. And, you know. I know, that's the truth. I mean, with kids who are like this since birth, and then you suddenly put them like this, it's not just the bones you're changing. It's a lot of All stuff. Of that oh, it's, yeah, it's just awful. Nerves. So, so I signed off that a long time ago. I like that.